Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to have a look at the Airfix Cromwell, which I have uh, done a build of. So this is a build review, which we're going to go through and just talk about a few of the points of interest, the good and the bad. This is the Mark VI variant with the short gun. Um, I've also got the Mark IV with the longer barreled gun, it's 75mm um, in the turret. So, interesting kit. Um, a great release, fills a gap that hasn't been filled for, for a while. I think the, the Tamiya kit came out in the 90s. There's been a few kits along the way, um, none of them would be sort of classed as replacing that uh, in, in any sense. So this was the first chance for Airfix to jump on board and after bu building the kit I've got a few thoughts uh, based on that so uh, let's get into the build review and I will uh, let you know how I got on. Okay so as we get into this one what we've got here is pretty modern kit. The engineering of the hull is is pretty good it's on tamiya level but when you get up to the turret they give you the top portion of the turret and then these side plates mate onto it they have you do that if you look at follow the instructions they have you do that in mid-air which is not the way to do it and they also have you attaching it to the bottom of the turret which is is like a there's not much of a mating place for that so what i've done is use the slots around the top of the turret and that is how I glued this together. Now when we get into the next one there will be a build video of the actual Cromwell Mark IV. So this one's going to be carried through into the painting stage. I'm just trying to break things up a little bit in the way that I'm doing these videos but uh, you will see everything I'm talking about one way or another when we get on through into different builds going forward on the channel. But as you can see ultimately the turret goes together quite nicely. Now when you get onto the hole like I said it really does just clip together. It's um, really quite astonishing fit. Um, the photo etch at the front, you've got two sort of uh, bits there running under the light guards, just where my finger is. They're a bit of a nightmare. You just got to get around them the best you can. Um, it's it's two pieces glued at a right angle and I mean it's just a disastrous way of, of it being engineered but again we'll get into that in more detail. Other than that, the plastic components, it goes together really well, clips together, um now the link and length tracks as well are actually quite nice they're lacking a bit of sag along the top but you can kind of you know put a bit in there as you can see you can also show it with fenders off i'm going to be putting the fenders on this one but you can show it with fenders off and ultimately the build this was um a week of evenings with a couple hours on a weekend so all in all it's probably taken me about six to eight hours to get the model actually built all the parts clipped off cleaned up and ready for painting so not bad um in fact very good actually very good uh, overall now the main error is the wheels and uh, that's where i spent my time trying to get the sovereign wheels working if it wasn't for that and if you don't worry about the bolts on the wheels this kit will build up lovely you can build it up in a week paint it in a weekend get on the weathering and you know couple of weeks and you'll be done now these are the wheels that i use these are currently the only ones that are available aftermarket they're not designed for this kit there is a bit of clever marketing um airfix has been added into it uh, but these aren't designed for this airfix kit however they do fit and they do fix the issue however they are a very old style of resin they're nothing like what you would get these days um generally uh, if you think of like edward resin or, or high quality resin that sort of thing these are not it um, they don't glue together that well you've got to do quite a bit of drilling out uh, into in to, to mount them uh, there's quite a lot of air bubbles quite a lot of kind of issues going through it um, i've had to take the hubs off because none of these hubs are actually properly circular they're kind of deformed um, so you're onto a losing battle trying to sand that up. It's very soft, obviously, resin, so you haven't really got much of a chance to get that sorted. Uh, but I use the kit herbs. The wheels have got the correct bolts. They did go together all right, and they weren't a massive issue. So, you know, you've got you to make your choice on that. They're £15 each. They're very usable. Make of that what you will. Now, one other thing I thought I'd criticise this kit with... Uh, and I hope this isn't coming across as a pure criticism, it's meant to be an, an overview of the kit, is 
The marking scheme. So, um, I don't know about B. I think the marking scheme B, which is an overall green tank, is pretty straightforward. But this one here is completely wrong. Uh, it's not black. It is actually Dunkelgelb, believe it or not. Um, this is a Czechoslovakian uh, tank, uh, which was uh, clearing around Dunkirk. It was based around, um, around that area, just after the Normandy landings. And it seems the best uh, story that can be, be brought to it is that the camouflage pattern was painted on with captured Dunkel Gelb, which is obviously the German dark yellow. So it's an interesting scheme and i'm going to delve into that more as we go forward into the painting side of things uh, but there's a there's a great um build review on tracklink so that's worth uh, checking out just google tracklink air fix cromwell and you'll see it there um, and it goes into great detail all the way through now i'm just showing you here what you've got left on the sprues which is quite a lot um You've got a hedgerow cutter, obviously. Um, we've got this uh, intake cover as well, which actually, if you're going to use that, it has got uh, sink marks all the way along the top of it. So they do need sorting out, really. And the corresponding dividers on the inside is what's causing that. That's my rundown on the Airfix Cromwell uh, from a build point of view. Uh, so a bit of a mixed bag. Um, I don't think I think if you want to build a Cromwell this is your starting point if you want it to be a modern version of it perhaps at the minute all we've got is the Sovereign 2000 wheels or taking the wheels from uh, an existing Tamiya kit I think if you the, the best scenario is if you've had a Tamiya kit in your stash for about 10 years grab one of these airfix kits are about 22 to 24 pounds in the UK you can take the wheels at the, the Tamiya kit you could cross kit a few bits and bobs, maybe change out the turret depending on how you feel. And I think you'd end up with a really great kit. The Tamiya kit does lack in a number of areas now. It does show its age. It needs an etch set. It needs a few refinements here and there. This Airfix kit doesn't really. The moulding quality is extremely good. Uh, the, the crispness of the panels, the way it goes together, it's a really nice build. Everything's pretty much there for the, the, the most builders. The wheel issue is a problem. That's about it, really. The the engineering around the turret, a little bit iffy, but there we go. I mean, it's, I think it's an all right kit. So to, um, so in conclusion, I think uh, it's pretty good. Certainly fell short in a number of areas. And personally, I, the only thing I think Airfix has done here, other than uh, get the marking schemes wrong, is put their label and box it put their label on it and actually box the kit everything else including the decals seem to all come from academy i'm certain we're going to see this kit out in an academy boxing that's if there hasn't been some strange deal struck by airfix but they don't seem to have had any input in regards to the design or any of that really other than just kind of claim own ownership of it i may be wrong but uh, if someone's done the cad design god only knows why they got the wheels wrong when they already had that in their catalog they've even got it right on the painting instructions so it is difficult to really give them any praise on that front so that's my personal view it's a it's a classic academy kit it does well in a number of areas and falls short in a, in a couple of crucial areas that's academy all over but all in all so if you really want to super detail a cromwell build one up at the modern standards i think this is your kit and maybe cross kit it with a tamiya if you want an easy life, just build the Tamiya kit. If you don't care about the wheels, build this one straight out of the box. So hopefully that was of interest to you. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing to the channel. Give the video a like. And as always, stay tuned. And I'll see you in the next video.